Did you know we've got an invisible crisis at our feet? Yep, our soil is dying sooner than you think, and we need to find ways to breathe new life into it before it's too late. And that means learning how to fix something we've created along the way, because can you imagine what'll happen if the world's soil runs out? Well, let's dig deeper into it and get some answers. First off, do we even understand how important soil is for our planet? Soil is definitely one of the least understood, but also the most important things we need for sustainable agriculture, and we need to take its life into account because it fosters so many living organisms like worms, insects, fungi, and organic matter. For many people, that's the icky stuff, but we gotta understand how the ecosystem works and how these living organisms play a huge role in the circle of life, if you will. Now, just a single handful of healthy soil is home to over 50 billion life forms. And putting them into perspective, the global population is 7.8 billion. In fact, let's take it up a notch. There have been approximately 117 billion humans ever born since the start of time. So just a bit over two handfuls of healthy soil has more life forms than all the humans ever existed. Now's a nice time to take a step back and think about the fact that a handful of soil is literally a world on its own. With that said, these life forms within the soil, nutrients and minerals are actually what helps plants grow healthier and nutrient rich, while also boosting crop yield. And topsoil is absolutely important if we want to meet 95% of our global nutritional requirements. So that's not just the crops we eat, but also the plants that we feed to our livestock. So in other words, without healthy soil, we're pretty much screwed. Having said that, where did we go wrong? All right, so society relies on healthy soils to give us food, clean water, and of course, habitation. But what we fail to realize is that soil is a non-renewable resource, so we can't really replace it once it's gone or degraded. In fact, the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has sent out a warning for people who aren't freaking out as much as they should, that the declining soil quality is a major global problem and is actually starting to negatively impact food security, water availability, and even carbon sequestration. And did you know that poorly managed agricultural practices are actually what caused the declining soil quality. In fact, if this goes on, it's not too long before we start seeing desertification, deforestation, and chemical pollution. So if we want to protect this vital resource, we need to pull our sleeves up and adopt sustainable land management practices. And that includes farmers using organic fertilizers and trying their best to minimize tillage and, of course, planting cover crops to help prevent erosion. Now, improving soil health can dramatically impact a bunch of things. And we're talking about garden production, farm profitability, and also environmental sustainability. But if our soil's in bad shape, where do we even even start. Up next, let's dig deeper into the signs of poor soil health. Now, poor soil health is a pretty common problem in gardens and farms, and honestly, there are a bunch of things that can let you know that the soil's in pretty bad shape, and that's a lack of healthy plant growth, some bare patches of soil, and especially compacted or crumbly soil. With that said, plants need nutrients to grow, and if the soil we've got isn't rich in nutrients, the plants will be stunted, or they'll fail to thrive. And when we're talking about compacted or crumbly soil, it makes it more difficult for plants to root, which in turn causes them to suffer from moisture stress. And if you notice any of these signs in your garden or farm, you need to take a closer look at your soil's health. Now, thankfully, there are a bunch of ways you can breathe new life into dying soil. But the issue is the lack of seriousness around such an issue. Many people today still don't consider it a big crisis, which leads to incompetence and inefficiency, which only worsens soil health. Moving on, let's take a look at how we can save our dying soil. One of the best ways to do that is to add organic matter, because it's a pretty crucial part of soil quality. Now, it's actually composed of living and decomposing plants and animals and their waste products. Plus, biodegradable materials actually help remove soil structure, aeration, and even water retention to also provide nutrients for plants. In fact, it also goes ahead to regulate soil temperature and pH levels. So if we're adding more organic matter to the soil, it can drastically help improve its quality, which in turn makes it more productive and efficient. And as the organic matter breaks down, it also releases the central nutrients that plants need for their healthy growth. Now adding to the list of benefits, organic matter also helps to improve soil structure by increasing its porosity and water holding capacity and it comes in the form of compost manure and green manures and other than organic matter we've also got compost which actually helps recycle plant materials and add nutrients and organic matter directly to the soil in fact it improves soil structure aeration and drainage while even increasing its ability to hold water and nutrients adding to that compost also helps break down organic matter release essential plant nutrients and even promote the growth of beneficial microorganisms and thanks to the multiple benefits, compost is definitely one of our favorite ways to improve the health of your soil and further encourage the development of healthy plants. Now you can definitely go to your nearest garden center or nursery and get some compost, or you can take it up a notch and make your own compost at home. It's pretty easy. Like, all you gotta do is just collect some organic waste like leaves, vegetable peels, grass clippings, all of that sort of stuff, and add it to a compost bin or pile. Over time, you'll see the waste break down into rich, crumbly compost that's gonna do a 
a whole lot of wonders to your soil's health and quality. Also, a few soil amendments and some incorporated cover crops might be just what your soil needs. Now, if your soil is low in nutrients, you may need to add a bunch of soil amendments like compost, green sand, or bone meal. Now, if you're wondering about what soil amendments are, well, they're typically just a bunch of unique materials that you mix in your soil to improve its quality. In fact, most soil amendments are going to improve soil fertility, aeration, and drainage, while also helping reduce compaction, increase water retention, and also improve the soil's ability to support plant growth. Now, here's the deal. These amendments can be organic or inorganic and are basically added to established soil. Or maybe you can even think of it as some sort of planting mix for new plants. Now, common organic soil amendments are basically just going to be a mix of compost, manure, and peat moss. On the other hand, inorganic soil amendments are going to include perlite, vermiculite, and sand. Now, talking about incorporating cover crops, they're basically just plants that are planted to cover and improve the soil rather than harvest it. Having said that, it's going to slow down soil erosion, improve water retention, enhance soil growth, prevent weeds, and even help in controlling pests and diseases. And while all of this is important, we need to focus more on sustainable farming practices. From crop rotation to conservation tillage and agroforestry, there are a bunch of sustainable farming practices that can drastically improve your soil health. Now, crop rotation actually involves growing a series of different types of crops in a specific order, and we do that to maintain soil fertility and health while controlling pests and also improving yields. And crop rotation is pretty common practice, but sadly, it has fallen out in the past few years because of all the synthetic fertilizers and pesticides. But with the rise of sustainable agriculture, if we really want to make a difference, we can definitely bring back crop rotation as an important part of farm management. And while we're on the topic, conservation tillage is also another excellent way to improve water infiltration, decrease soil erosion, and increase organic matter. It's a sustainable farming practice that actually involves minimal disturbance to the soil, so that's basically going to hold off most of the passes with heavy equipment so that the soil is less likely to be compacted. Moving on to agroforestry is basically a land management practice that actually integrates trees and a bunch of other woody plants into traditional farming and ranching operations. And by doing this, it helps improve soil health, reduce erosion, and promote more efficient use of water and other resources. And one of the best parts of the economic benefits of diversifying farm income and creating a whole lot of opportunities for value-added products. That's a wrap for this video. Are you concerned about the crisis of our dying soil? What do you think should be done to save what we have? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.